Good morning everybody. How are we all? Welcome to Technique Tuesday. At, I'm having to check the date. Today is the 14th of July and uh, as we have been for the last few months I am live from my studio down here in Dorset. Not very sunny today, a little bit rainy and miserable. So the perfect opportunity to talk about the things that we're going to talk about today. Now I have a feeling that uh, you're going to want to ask me some questions today so if you are fairly confident with uh, Facebook then just in the comments section uh, type the uh, question that you would like to ask me regarding this and also don't forget to say hello and good morning. I'm going to look to see who's in the room now. Uh, so, Ali WT, uh, good morning my lovely, that's very kind of you to say. Um, Kellen, good morning. That's very nice to see you. Sending you love too. Um, good morning, Lou. Uh, morning, Jill. Morning, Simone. Morning, Sally. Morning, Liz. And everybody who is joining us this morning. It's very lovely to have you here. So today's Technique Tuesday is a little bit different because I'm not actually going to be painting today. I thought it would be interesting and I'm hoping that you think it's going to be helpful to uh, look at how I choose reference material. And I'm sort of doing this retrospectively because I know that some of you managed to catch my demonstration that I did for virtual patchings, uh, whatever day that was, Sunday, day before yesterday, um, where the uh, Fantastic Search Press invited me to represent them in their virtual marquee as part of the Virtual Patchings Festival. And I did a tawny owl in mixed media. And let's show you the tawny owl painting that I did. So uh, here it is, um, not exactly what I would call a completed painting, but as uh, I only really had an hour, I was really enthusiastic about showing you how I take something from sort of conception uh, to almost completion. Um, but uh, with all of these demonstrations, we sort of launch it at you and we say, look, here's the line drawing, here's the photograph, here's the materials. And then we concentrate an awful lot more on how it's painted. But I wanted to back up a few steps and uh, wanted to kind of share with you how I get to that point, how I get to the reference material that I use. So I know there's probably some questions that you have to ask about copyright. I'm going to slightly skim over that if you don't mind today because copyright is a huge subject. Today we're just going to deal with the photographs that you take, the ones that you take personally of objects that um, you can then interpret as an artist. And what I want to do is take you through some of the photographs that I actually don't like that I sort of have rejected. Let's just see um, if uh, any of you have uh, commented any further because I can see lots of things ticking in this morning. Um, who have we got? Uh, Avril, good morning. Mandy, Wendy, uh, Janet, uh, Sally, Andrea, um, Tony, uh, Linda. Gosh, you're all uh, piling in this morning. Hilary. Oh, it's it overcast where you are too, Hilary. Uh, Jane, uh, Susan, <laughs> Bridget says she's finally managed to make it. Um, Ali WT has recognised that I treated myself yesterday, had my nails done. <laughs> and, uh, oh, bless you, lots of people commenting that I look nice this morning. Thank you, that's really kind of you. And uh, so, um, <laughs> and we have people from all over the globe this morning and uh, people saying very nice things about my book. That's very kind of you. Thank you very much. Right. Without further ado, let's take you through the photographs that I rejected to get to the photograph that I used for that demonstration. Now, uh, one of the things that you're going to love today is I've got a little bit of a something extra for you over on my blog. So even if you have watched live this morning, give me about half an hour after this broadcast is finished pop over to the blog and then there's a little extra special something for you there. So don't forget that. I'll try to remember to uh, say that at the end as well. So let me take you through some of the photographs that I took. Now, I was very fortunate. Um, there's a very um, 
exceptionally kind gentleman that lives close to me called Alan who runs something called Mere Down Falconry and one day he brought a selection of his birds to the studio and I know some of you watching um, took part in that session too and I was particularly fascinated with the tawny owl we have a tawny owl that uh, lives in our wood but I can never get anywhere close to it to be able to capture it my photography skills are not good enough neither is my patience actually for sitting in the wood and waiting for that uh, one shot so um, I used Alan's a tawny owl, the name of which I can't remember, isn't that awful? Um, but uh, she was static and very tame, which made her quite easy to photograph. So let me take you through some of the photographs. Forgive me for looking down all the time. I have um, a piece of tech here, which means that we can switch between the photographs. Now, which one do I want to show you first? This is the one I want to show you first. So we had uh, the owls at one point where they were under canvas because it was raining the day that they came. And I took this photograph. Now, this is a, a not particularly happy owl, obviously. Um, tawny owls are nighttime hunters. That doesn't mean that they're not awake in the daytime. But she wasn't particularly happy. And this was one of the first uh, photographs that I took. So I'm calling this one too much flash owl. Poor thing. My uh, automatic flash kicked in, kind of lit her up and uh, she doesn't look very good there. Now, that's not a great photograph to paint from. The particulars of a tawny owl is that they are all about the eyes. And so I can't really see much of the eyes of this owl. The feather's fantastic. If I wanted to use it to sort of refer back to in terms of how does the pattern look on a tawny owl, then that's a great photograph. But in terms of personality and looking at the eyes, then it's not too great. Now, going on to this one next, this one is better in terms of its exposure but um, this one I am calling not enough eye owl because, okay, you've got quite a nice face. There's a, a bit of an odd shot because I'm photographing um, her from above. I keep saying it's her. I'm not entirely convinced that it is a her. Anyway, let's call her a her. Um, she can get offended later. Um, so uh, I'm kind of looking from the top down, which makes her feet very small. So if I wanted to do the whole bird, I'm not really down enough level with the bird in order to get her in proportion um, but that eye on the right hand side if you look at it kind of objectively you can see that there's not enough of it I can't really see around that corner enough for it to make a difference so I have called that photograph not enough eye owl now this next one is better in terms of me wanting to uh, take more, um, paint more of her head. I mean, it is a horribly composed photograph in the fact that at least the top third even of the photograph is all the white tent behind her. So in terms of photography, there will be people out there crying. Uh, but uh, it's better in that I can see a little bit more of her. But I have called this one Squiffy Eye Owl because there's always a danger, particularly when you are drawing or painting wildlife, that uh, if you actually religiously follow your reference material, it sometimes looks like you have painted it incorrectly. And this is a prime example of that. So on the left hand side, OK, the eye is not as open as it could be, but it's all right. But on the right, it's um, her face is a bit scrunched up. So I've called this one Squiffy Eye Owl simply because, as you can see, on the right hand side, you've got her eye looking a little bit sort of scrunched up. And in terms of her eye being scrunched up, I wouldn't want to follow that if I wasn't very confident in my drawing and replicate that absolutely as I see it. And then it look like I have done it badly. I've actually executed it badly. So uh, we're coming on to our penultimate photograph now. This is a better photograph in terms of her composition in the fact that she looks much more in proportion because tawny owls are surprisingly round um, and uh, her sort of head is uh, kind of stuck in her body and all of those kind of things. But this one I didn't like the aspect of because she's leaning back and obviously I have called her leaning back owl. 
and that way okay I might get away with it it might be an interesting one but for me she still doesn't look quite so alert she looks a little bit scared actually and so I don't really want the animal portraits that I do unless I'm trying to weave that kind of narrative to make it look as though she's kind of uh, drawing her head back in, tilting backwards and um, not looking like um, she's particularly happy in her situation. So that brings me to the photograph that I actually chose, uh, which is a cropped photograph. Um, I did actually crop it down from the original photograph that I took. Um, but you can now see why I've arrived at this particular subject matter. So uh, she's leaning forward. I'm a little bit closer to her. I've got so much more of that left hand eye uh, kind of scene. And you can see the highlight in it too. I can see much more detail. I can see the way the feathers are composed around the face and around the beak too. So um, it gives me kind of all the stuff that I'm looking for in order to create that painting. And then so hopefully you can see, if I take you back through those again, kind of uh, just a, a little bit quickly, let me get the right one first. So by comparison, here is a too much flash owl. Here is not enough eye owl. Here is squiffy eyed owl. Here is uh, Leaning Back Owl. And then we get to the last one, which is the one that I, I chose ultimately. So I'm hoping that from all of those, you can see exactly why I chose the reference material that I did. Now, in order to bring you this presentation today, I actually went through all the photographs that I took on that day. And I think, uh, well, I kind of stopped counting when I reached the sort of 250 300 mark and I'm not talking about all of the owls that we had that day I'm talking about just that number of photographs so it's really hard to kind of land on one photograph unless you are a stellar photographer of course uh, to sort of kind of alight on that one photograph that's going to give you the perfect amount of reference for your painting and let's just very quickly go back to that painting because then you can see, I mean, you can kind of see as well where it's not finished and where it needs a bit of extra dark and detail and all the rest of it. But then you can see how that reference material is going to translate into a painting. And that's really, really important. If you like to work from photographs, then you are going to need good photographs to work from. And there's an interesting debate about working from photographs. There's lots of people that say it's cheating and um, let's not go there with that, shall we? But there are also um, good photographs to work from and bad photographs to work on. And actually the photographs that work really well aren't necessarily really stellar photographs. They're just, they need the right amount of information to be uh, useful to you in order to um, interpret it as you feel uh, for your painting. So if you have any questions about uh, reference material, this is the time to get them into the chat um, because I am gonna uh, conclude in a little minute. Um, so if you have any questions about that, put them in the chat now and I will try to answer them. I just saw one come in from Ali. There's a beautiful kestrel sitting on a post in my garden right now. I wish I had my camera handy. Can't get a close enough photo on my phone. That's so frustrating when that happens, isn't it? What I try to do in that situation is that I try to sort of capture the moment in my head because that is the story that is told, that it's sort of sitting on the post. And then I will go and look for alternative photo reference and then I can try to recreate all of that in my head so I hope that works. Uh, Wendy's saying so reassuring to know I'm not the only one to take 200 photographs of a subject. Yes absolutely I'm a terrible 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 photographer. I have a very fancy camera that I don't really know how to use. I use my iPhone as well as to be said um, but I do take lots and lots of shots because until you get back into the studio and you kind of load them all up on your computer and you have a look at them with that real sort of artist discerning eye, you don't really know what you've got. Um, Margaret is saying, thank goodness for digital cameras. Yes, 
thank goodness. <laughs> no more queuing up at Boots to get film processed to then realise that you didn't quite get the shot that you wanted. Yes, absolutely. And certainly, um, both on my uh, stills camera and on my iPhone as well, you can have a look at them and you can kind of explode them to see if they're in focus and see if you've got the right shot. And I have to say, when I am photographing things, then I do take my posh camera and I do take my iPhone at the same time. Uh, <laughs> Ali WT is saying thanks Ali we'll try that um, Wendy is saying Pixabay photos are they commercial free to use adapt for painting and to sell um, Wendy you do have to check with um, the particular license for each photograph but generally speaking Pixabay are royalty free they come under their own type of license they're not under creative commons license for those of that you that know a little bit more about that they have their own license and usually what they ask is that you reference back to the photographer or you reference back to Pixabay as you know I do all the time I talk about Pixabay at length and there's a lovely lovely scheme on there where you can buy a photographer a coffee you click on the button and you buy them a coffee and I tend to do that because it strikes up some really lovely friendships with photographers too uh, what else have we got going on? Oh gosh, lots of comments coming in. Uh, Linda says, my hubby is professional and he takes hundreds just to get the right shot. I feel so much better now. I know I'm a useless photographer, so I feel much better now. Um, and saying, so lucky I have a friend that's a wildlife photographer and he's willing to let me use them. I have two owl photos that he sent me. <gasps> How fabulous. And you know they'll all be in shot and you know they'll be perfect. Uh, morning, Beatrice. Um, so I'm hoping that that answers uh, a lot of questions about uh, photo reference and how you can use it. And um, Bridget saying, now I know why my paintings look squiffy. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so don't forget, give me half an hour or so, and uh, just because I need to upload this video uh, onto my blog, and then uh, you'll see there's a little extra something for you if you go over to my website, which is, let me pop it up on the screen for you, because I can do that. Um, www.alisonseaboard-fineart.co.uk and in the menu you click on Ali's blog there'll be a little overview of what we talked about this morning there'll be the video there all the Technique Tuesdays you can find they're all on the blog so uh, you can either pop over to YouTube to watch them back or you can read a little bit more about them on the blog but there's that extra little special surprise for you there today a reward if you like for um, going over to my blog and reading there so I hope that helps uh, just to answer a few questions before we go today uh, Susan says I have used free reference photos for artists on Facebook are these okay um, I'd have to check Susan uh, off the top of my head I seem to remember that you have to um, give a shout out to the photographer you have to attribute to the photographer but I would absolutely uh, definitely have to um, check that so uh, you do the same Avril if you like printing French towns and villages all the photos on the good life France on Facebook are free to use oh that's fantastic thank you Avril I didn't know about that really really good uh, so I hope that helped uh, thank you very much uh, for joining me just to give you a little bit of a heads up it is the 14th of July today we've got another Technique Tuesday next week and then I'm taking a bit of time off if that's all right with everybody I'm just gonna um, a kind of a bit of rest and recuperation and then we'll be back at the beginning of August with an absolute vengeance you take care of yourselves won't you and um, keep painting keep experimenting keep sharing it on the social media because uh, it's so lovely for me to see uh, take care of yourselves and I will see you very soon bye bye